And we're rolling overview of the Bible, Hebrews. We're picking up in the middle of chapter 11 uh, of Hebrews. A lot of people call this the Hall of Faith. There's all these people that are named for their faith. And, and it's, it's used as a, you know, it's kind of testimony. This is testimony time. This is testimony in church time. People, you know, getting up, giving their testimony. Noah, Abel, Ab- Abraham, Enoch, all of them. They're giving their testimony of how they in faith stood for the Lord. And so we get here in, in uh, verse 17. This is, By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was offering up his only begotten son. This is, this is tough. I mean, he was told that his descendants would come through Isaac and he's going to kill him. How is that going to happen? Well, Hebrews is the only place where this is really mentioned in the Bible. The projection of what was going on, verse 19, he says, He considered that God is able to raise men even from the dead, from which he also received him back as a type. And so he didn't, he didn't actually have to receive him from the dead because he didn't kill him. The Lord told him to stop before he killed him. But he was received back as a type. He, he, you know, his life was as good as dead because Abraham was going to fulfill the promise of God because he was going to just do what God said. He trusting that God is going to raise up uh, descendants for him through Isaac, even if he had to raise him from the dead. So when he received Isaac back, not you know, from the altar, he laid him on the altar, he got him back alive. He received him back as a type of Jesus who would come, who would come back to life uh, after he actually was sacrificed. And then it goes on, others that by faith, I like this one, by faith, verse 21, Jacob, as he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning on the top of his staff. Why did they put that in there? Well, I think it's interesting that, you know, on their staff, it seems at that time they would they would etch in a uh, little... Uh, situations and historic things that happen of the faithfulness of God in their staff. And so you'd have a, in a staff, you'd have all these, these historic moments etched in there, which basically uh, encouraged and kept you uh, um, underst- in understanding of the faithfulness of God and the things that he did. So it says, Jacob, as he was dying, blessed each of his sons and worshiped leaning on the top of his staff. So as he's leaning on there, he's thinking, God has been so faithful through all these things. So he's leaning on his staff and blessing his sons because he's seen the faithfulness of God and he's projecting that or pronouncing that over them. Uh, Verse 24, By faith Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be called the son, son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to endure ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, considering the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. Once again, he's saying, how were these Hebrews able to give up joyfully the seizure of their property? Well, at that time, they were looking for the reward. Just like Moses. Moses could have had all of, I mean, Egypt, that was the place where, man, they had it going. Talk about prosperity. And, and like, uh, this is the place where things are, are, were really the best in all of the earth. But uh, Moses says was willing to give that up and not be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter in order to actually... Uh, Suffer the reproach with the people of God, considering the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. And so you had they're putting their faith in something that they have not even seen at this point. He didn't see it at that point. He didn't see the power of God uh, fully revealed until God delivered them from Egypt with the signs and wonders. In verse 32, we're given a whole list of a group of more people. And what more shall we say? For time will fail me if I tell of Gideon, Barak. Samson, Jephthah of David, and Samuel and the prophets, who by faith, and he, he gives, listen carefully to how this faith plays out here. He says, who by faith conquered kingdoms, performed acts of righteousness, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions. I wouldn't even want to be in that situation to see, do I have faith for this? You know, well, okay, we'll see. We'll put you in a bunch of lions and see if you have faith. I, I don't even know if I want to go there. Quench the power of fire escaped the edge of the sword, from weakness were made strong, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Amazing. By faith they did these things. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Okay, this is the highlights of faith. This is the faith, the miracle working faith. Then there's another faith that begins to be talked about here. Others were tortured. Wait, what do you mean they're tortured by faith? Well, these are the ones that were looking and had not set their hope on this world, but set their hope in a 
in a future inheritance and the reward that was coming. They were tortured, not accepting their release in order that they might obtain a better resurrection. You know, so they were looking to the resurrection. They weren't looking to their the present things. And others experienced mockings and scourging, yes, also chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. These all did these in faith, it says. They were able to endure this because they had faith and hope in something that was coming. Sawn in two, and you know, this is like a wooden saw, you know. It, most likely. Sawn in two. They were tempted. They were put to death with the sword. They went about in sheepskins, goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, ill-treated. Uh, this isn't really sounding, you know, like uh, I'm being blessed. But this is more like in Philippians 1.29. They were not only counted worthy to believe, but to suffer for his sake. And it goes on in verse 38. Men of whom the world was not worthy, wandering in deserts and mountains and caves and holes in the ground, and all these having gained approval through their faith. They believe God in spite of all of the circumstances and situations. In this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, for Jesus said, I have overcome the world. They had not received what was promised because God, verse 40, had provided something better for us so that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. So there's a whole body of believers coming together in fulfillment at the end of the age, a complete body. The temple is being put together. All the stones are coming together. There'll be a, a final harvest and God puts together his, his tabernacle. There'll be a feast of tabernacles at the end of the age when God's put together his holy place where he's going to come and tabernacle. He's going to come and dwell. But it's going to get there through some people overcoming in faith and seeing miraculous things, resurrections from the dead and all of that, and others uh, being persecuted unto death, but being faithful unto death because they're looking not for just this world, but they see something ahead. They see something greater than this world. So it goes on to chapter 12. Therefore, since we have so great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, and it seems like he's referring to these, this hall of faith, all these witnesses, all these people that have gone through this, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us and let us run with endurance the, endurance, the race that is set before us. We have to endure. He's saying to these Hebrews, that, you know what, and to us, you know, there's some things you're going to have to endure in this life, but keep your eyes set ahead. Keep them on the prize. It's fixing our eyes on Jesus, it says here, uh, next verse, verse 2. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. How did he get through that? For the joy that was set before him. It wasn't pleasant going to the cross. It wasn't pleasant being ridiculed, mocked, stripped naked, and whipped, and beaten, and thorns put on your head. He did it for the joy that was set before him. And it says in verse 3, for consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you may not grow weary and lose heart. So we fix our eyes on Jesus and, and consider the things that he went through so that we can endure in this life and go through the things that we might endure. Not saying, oh, look, everything's, it's, it's all failed, it's not working. We're told, Daniel's warned that you know, one of the, the uh, things that would happen at the end of the age is the wearing down of the saints, the wearing of the saints, the you know, there's a time when, when uh, this man of lawlessness will be able to overcome the holy people for a period of time. But we're called to overcome and in the midst of that be witnesses for this kingdom that's coming, for the hope that's coming, setting our eyes on Jesus and enduring the cross. So he goes on here in chapter 12 and he begins to talk about uh, a father's discipline and how the father disciplines us and trains us and gets us ready. And he says, Verse 11, all discipline for the moment seems not to be joyful, but sorrowful. Yet to those who have been trained by it, afterwards it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. And so this is part of the warning. There's things that you go through, but the Lord is using that as a discipline, as a training in our lives. And it's not pleasant at the time it's happening. But he says those who have been trained by it, afterwards it, afterwards it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness. You learn to walk in the ways of the Lord and, and holy unto him, sanctified unto him and to endure through whatever situation you go through because you've already been trained in the furnace of these, you've been disciplined in the furnace of these uh, circumstances.